Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. Breaking news, there has just been a magnitude 4.6 earthquake at Campi Flagre, Italy's supervolcano. And this is in one of the main areas of deformation. And this is a significant earthquake for a volcanic system. Typically they are of a lower magnitude. And in fact, this is the strongest earthquake that has occurred here in about 40 years slightly stronger than the magnitude 4.6 that occurred on March 13th. There have been some other magnitude 4 earthquakes in 2025, also last year in 2024, but in general, these magnitude 4 earthquakes are new to Campi Flagre in the recent history. So just really the past couple years, there's been an acceleration of uplift and seismicity and gas emissions at Campi Flagre since 2005, really going exponential in 2020. And that trend has now continued with this most recent 4.6 earthquake here, a big earthquake showing that there's a lot of big activity happening under the surface under this supervolcano. Now, for some reason, this earthquake is not showing up on the USGS map. Sometimes they do a filtering of the data or just isn't registered by the Global Seismic Network, though this magnitude 4.6 should be showing up there. But we can go right to the source. Here we have the INGV earthquake map zoned in on Potswali and Campi Flagre. That's the overall volcanic system. You see all these calderas here. These are all part of that. This entire bay here is very, very active. The magma chambers underneath, there is our magnitude 4.6. And this is showing all the earthquakes over the past week. So you see that there's quite a lot of seismicity in general, though this is actually a quiet period here. These are just low magnitude earthquakes. We see the seismic stations as well, but this 4.6 being the biggest earthquake in a long time at Campi Flagre. And we're going to look at the historic seismicity next, but first let's just see where we are on the globe in general. So this is Naples right here, a wonderful city filled with wonderful people. You have Pozzuoli right there. It's just to the west, a little town. They are directly living on top of this very large volcanic system. The last main eruption was 1538 with a VEI-3 eruption. And then before that, it erupted with a VE-5 eruption around the year 2150 BC, plus or minus 500 years. And that was the Agnana Monte Spina eruption. So that was quite large. Here we see Vesuvius. So there's actually a lot of volcanic activity in Italy because you have the Campanian arc. It's a volcanic arc based on plate tectonics slicing through. You will also notice this very interesting structure here. This is Marsili volcano. In fact, the largest volcano in Europe, if you just go by size and traditional geologists have it constrained just to this ridge. But if you zoom out, you see a very clear caldera structure, which is rimmed by islands. And some of these are volcanoes. So I think this entire thing is probably more than we think it is at this moment in time. And we see just to the north, we have Vesuvius and also Campi Flagre, both which have been very active historically. Let's look at the recent size Missy for Campi Flagre to put this magnitude 4.6 into greater context. You'll recall that size Missy has been increasing exponentially since 2020. And so here we're looking at all the earthquakes magnitude four and greater going from June 30th of 2020 up till now. That's the limit that I can show with this application from INGV, just a five year time frame. But that's going to capture, we think, probably the most significant seismic events because of how seismicity has been increasing so dramatically, as well as uplift and also gas emissions. That's really become a significant problem at Campi Fagre over the past few months if you've been tracking this story. So here we have our earthquakes that fulfill that criteria, magnitude four or greater for the past five years. And we see this 4.6 right there, most recently today at 1047 universal time, then a 4.4 that occurred on May 13th. That was quite strong. And then a 4.6 that occurred on March 13th. And there was a seismic burst that occurred just before that end of February. That was very interesting. There was a whole bunch of these unusual pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals that are picked up fairly close by in Cumiana, Italy, which I think are related to that seismic burst because they immediately preceded about a thousand earthquakes that can't be for gray. But then if you go further back, we see uh, in 2024, there was a magnitude four, 
uh, actually 4.4 as well. Then there was a magnitude 4 in 2023, this is October, and then a 4.2 September 2023, and that's it. So no magnitude 4 earthquakes registered at Camp Ifugre going from June 2020 up to September 2023, and then you see how the magnitude has been increasing. So let's go to our USGS map, which allows us to look further back in time to see what other earthquakes have occurred with similar seismicities. Here we have our USGS historic earthquakes map going from January 1st of the year 2005 up to now. I chose 2005 because that's when we started seeing increasing activity at Camp Eiffel Gray with the seismicity, the uplift, the gas emissions. There were periods of activity going back in like the 60s, 70s, 80s, but just 2024 and 2025, those two years have been historic in terms of activity at Camp Eiffel Gray, even on like a century long time scale. So that is something to think about. But here I set the bounding box for right around Camp Eiffel Gray. I think I actually included Vesuvius in it too, but there were some earthquakes of higher magnitude right in there. I excluded them because that's not exactly right in that main magma chamber area. And so if we set this to only show the earthquakes in the Bay of Potswali. We see uh, the oldest one there being a 4.2 going back to 2017. And then uh, this 4.2 in 2023. And in general, you don't see any of these having the same magnitudes as what's shown by INGV. So a uh, thing to point out and to note and be mindful of is that A, sometimes the magnitudes are lower with USGS and B, sometimes they don't even show up as we saw today because that earthquake that's occurred today, the 4.6 isn't on USGS yet. They maybe need to include it. This is fairly recent. I'm reporting on this fairly quickly, but that's important to keep in mind. So this is almost certainly not the, the true, accurate, 100% complete historic record. But in general, you see that there really hasn't been that much activity at Camp Eiffel Gray, magnitude four and greater, and we don't see anything greater than magnitude five. Let's talk about how earthquake energy scales by looking at our data from Volcano Discovery. Here we have a web page showing a variety of data on earthquakes at Campy Flagray or the Flagrayan fields as provided by Volcano Discovery. And we're gonna just kind of work through this web page. This is linked in the video description as well as all the sources that I've used in this video. If you look here, number of quakes per year, look at how dramatically this has gone up. So here's this spike. This is 1984. That was when there was some significant seismic activity at Campy Flagray. They have installed a lot of new uh, seismographs in the area since, which probably explains some of this increase as compared to 1984 in the number of quakes across these magnitudes, magnitude two and magnitude three and greater. But still you notice with 2024 right there, a huge increase in 2025 is nearly at the same values, even though we're just about halfway through the year. Actually right now, June, 30th today, we have six months left in 2025 starting tomorrow. So 2025 has been the most active year for Campy for Gray in the recent record, really, and this 4.6 is effectively confirming that. Here we have our past year of earthquakes. We have our depth plotted there. We have our date plotted there, and we see the size of the earthquakes here. And so you won't see any with the yellow or the red. Uh, at least these two, which is magnitude five, magnitude six, you will see this like darker burgundy red there for three to four. And we do have a couple orange, at least this one orange one there. And yeah, there's another orange one there, magnitude four, a few magnitude fours in this record. See how close they are, right? They're all within that top five kilometers. So you're not going that far down with these earthquakes. These are very clearly linked to the volcanic system. You can get fluids to move up due to hydrothermal activity, and then the rock can fracture, slip, and that is your earthquake earthquake. So it's not necessarily related every time to the movement of magma. Sometimes it's just the movement of like briny fluids, but generally the bigger earthquakes require more power behind them. And those are likely going to be from the actual movement of magma. And you see that this magma is not far below the surface. If you go down further, we'll see some other uh, graphics here. And here's a graph I want to show you. We see our magnitude of quakes and energy across time for the year 2025 thus far. And so we see this blue line there. This is the energy release from these earthquakes. You can measure this in like megawatt hours, for example, and maybe kilowatt hours. We see our scale there going up from zero to 400 megawatt hours. And so look at all these quakes that occurred during this time frame. all these tiny ones here. We have magnitude on the left Y axis. And so you don't see any of these magnitude going to that five range. 
we see the size of these earthquakes corresponding to the overall energy that they released. And you see that this 4.6 are caused that to jump up dramatically. So look at how much that is compared to the rest. You have almost as much energy released in that single 4.6 magnitude earthquake today as all the rest of the seismicity combined for 2025 thus far. So that's one important way to look at these systems. And remember that the earthquake magnitude really scales in a pretty dramatic fashion. Going from magnitude 3 to 4 is 32 times more energy and 10 times the intensity of that earthquake. So this 4.6 is quite significant for this system and also just in general for a volcanic system. It's rare to get earthquakes greater than magnitude 5 for a volcanic system. It happens sometimes. We've seen that in Ethiopia. We've seen recently, we've also seen that at Yan Mayan, a magnitude 6 earthquake near that volcano there. But in general, if you're getting earthquakes up into a magnitude 4 range, that is significant. If we look at 2024, we see uh, some earthquakes here. The size of the circle is a little different because of the scaling. So this 4.4 there is not more energy released than the 4.6, but you see that seismic burst that occurred in May, how most of the energy released for Campi Fagre was in that sudden burst of earthquakes uh, where you get hundreds or even a thousand plus within just a few days or a week. And then we see it kind of climbing up there. So a big increase in the energy release at Campi Flagre just in the past 24 hours. This energy is rippling out and it's interacting with other systems. So we could start to see some other systems change as a result of this magnitude 4.6 earthquake. I would not be surprised if we get a, a burst of increased gas emissions as well, which is what happened after the seismic burst that occurred in February, then also after these higher magnitude earthquakes in March and May. So if you live in the area, just be mindful of that. And in general, I would just be mindful of the fact that you have a massive volcanic system under your feet and that could erupt really at any time. There are different types of eruption and some of them are like steam explosions. That can happen at any moment, but uh, you do see signs of activity before a volcano erupts usually. And so that's a good thing to track. Like Mount St. Helens, the United States, it started showing signs of activity, eventually erupted. But at the end of the day, a volcano is a volcano. Sometimes it just happens. So in terms of, hey, we, we, we're going to completely rule out the fact that it's not going to erupt, that's not accurate. At any moment in time, a volcanic system like this could erupt. The question is, is it going to erupt? Like when and then also at what magnitude? But with the increasing uh, seismicity, gas emissions, uplift that can't be for gray, it looks like we're headed towards something. The question really is if and then also of what magnitude. Hopefully, no time soon. And here I want to show you the two main areas of deformation that's occurring at Campi Flagre based off of all the seismicity, the data, and then crunching the numbers. We see a lot of earthquakes clustered here in the Solfatara area where there's active fumaroles and there's gases coming up and mud pits that are boiling. This is the most active area by far but you also notice the second area of deformation. And if I toggle the screen here to show this earthquake, notice how the two are lined up the maps. Basically, that is happening in that second area. So this is not in the Solfatara zone, but it is still part of the larger system because you see that there are these two lobes, you could say, and then there's this larger zone of deformation. This data is for January 2015 to May 2024, so it doesn't include basically the past year of data, but this is rel basically the same setup where we have these two main zones of higher seismicity and also uplift and gas emissions. So as it relates to this system here, this 4.6 today may not necessarily trigger changes here immediately, but it is part of the larger system. And honestly, this is where more of the magma chamber is. Let's give it a look. Here we have a representation of the magma chamber at Campi Flagre, and here we have Potswali. So this is the caldera. We see the topography at the top there, a little bit of a ridge system. There's some shallow aquifers. Then you have the main mixed saturated reservoir, which has all of these briny fluids, things of that nature. And what they suspect is that there is this cap layer. So there's this seismic layer here, which is partially fractured that is kind of stopping the rest of the magma chamber from coming up and just expressing itself at the surface, you could say, because this is at a very high pressure. And so the more that earthquakes rupture this 
seismic uh, geologic cap layer, the more likely it is that this could then move up and cause the mixed saturated reservoir, which is very briny, has a lot of water, gas saturated too, to just phreatically explode like this. And then you could get a more typical Plinian eruption where you get the magma fountains and everything going nuts. So this is what they suspect it looks like based off of the seismic data and a lot of other data. They have really good modeling because these sort of systems, they make themselves known. You need these earthquakes to send out those sound waves to then be able to basically uh, measure the travel times and to create really nice 3D models. They've also done like resistivity surveys and more in this area, gravity uh, and magnetic surveys. So this is pretty close to accurate, we would think. And you'll notice again, the depth is not that deep. Going down to five, now this deep body probably extends further down. Uh, Campy for Gray seems it's fed by a hot spot. So that of course goes much further down, but it's not like this is buried 20 kilometers down and it's going to take some time to get to the surface to then, let's say, have an eruption. In just like a theoretical sense, this could really go at any time, as so long as that breaks up and you have enough upward pressure causing it to just boom shakalaka. And we're just now seeing Hawaii Kilauea erupt for the 27th episode. This is just a different hot spot, but we're seeing a lot of pressure in the earth around the globe because Hawaii is popping off like crazy. Other volcanoes around the globe are popping off like crazy. Indonesia and also Central America and of course Italy. So this is certainly something that could happen. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen or it's going to happen anytime soon, but it certainly could happen. That's the latest update for Campi Fagre in Italy. A new powerful magnitude 4.6 earthquake has rocked the region, really sending people into high alert. This size Missy has been increasing. Gas missions are going up. Uplift is increasing. And we see these cycles of Brady seism at Campi Fagre across time. You do wonder a little bit whether it is just uh, localized to Campi Fagre or perhaps these are larger changes unfolding involving Vesuvius and other Italian volcanoes, just in general, the Campanian Arc, perhaps Marsili here, whatever the heck this thing is, that definitely seems like some larger volcanic feature or even like an impact. It really looks like an impact crater. And then Marsili volcano could be a residual heat coming up from that impact because we know that impactors actually can mix a lot of their heat down deep into the crust and into the mantle. And then that could create theoretically a volcanic system. So that's an interesting idea. Um, that's a speculation. There's no hard data at all on this, but the geology looks very much like an impact crater. So perhaps there's deeper changes in the earth that are triggering these sort of powerful earthquakes at Campi Fagre, causing it to wake up. Perhaps it's just Campi Fagre itself finally coming out of slumber. Again, that last eruption, 1538. And then before that, with that VE5, 2150 BC or so. I'll keep you up to date every step of the way. Again, I'm your host, Devon Burns. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button, help the channel grow. Get this video out there to more people. Saying all my prayers for the people affected by these earthquakes and gas emissions and more at Potswali and in Naples. I'll see you all in the next video.